Alright, so this is the key for the Algebra 2 review. So you guys get ready for the semester 1 final. So first problem, it's just a factoring problem. Lots of solved by factoring. So you want to solve this x squared minus x minus 30 equals 0. Now make sure, don't ever start, you know, you don't want to start factoring until you have one side equal to 0. So we've got that here. So uh, if you're going to factor this, you might say, okay, I'm going to factor by splitting the middle term. Uh, those guys right there, those multiply to negative 30. What multiplies to negative 30 and adds to negative 1? That would be uh, negative 6 and 5. So you have effectively split the middle term. Then you group them up. Okay, so for out of the first two, I can take out an x, leaving x minus 6. Out of the second two, I can take a 5, which is no coincidence since it's factorable. I can take out an x. It'll be an x minus 6. So you can double check, right? 5 times x is 5x. 5 times minus 6 is minus 30. Okay, so then we're almost ready to we've got this thing factored. x plus 5 x minus 6. So when you multiply those two, you get 0. Well, if you're going to get 0 out of multiplication, then one of the parts you're multiplying, be it this one or this one, has to be 0. So you just say, well, what makes the blue piece 0? Well, that would be x equals negative 5. What makes the orange um, 0? That would be x equals 6. So those are your two solutions x equals negative 5, and x equals 6. Uh, number 2, we got n squared minus n minus 56. So you'd go ahead and you'd factor this one. I think this one, uh, when, the leading co when the leading coefficient is a 1, it's kind of nice. It's actually really nice. Um, you're really just looking for you know, right, what multiplies to negative 56 and adds to negative 1. So what negative 7 n minus 7 let's see I think it should be n plus 7 n minus 8 so if you've went through splitting the middle term that's how you get this thing factored but there's a shortcut when this leading coefficient is a 1 um, so there your solutions are n equals negative 7 n equals positive 8 Okay, number three. Three is a nice one to factor two. Plus three m minus ten equals zero. All right, check. It's already set equal to zero, so you can factor. Uh, you can try to factor it, and it does factor. All right, so this leading number is a one. So these will both be m's. So what multiplies to negative 10 and adds to 3? That would be positive 5 and negative 2. So your solutions are m equals negative 5, m equals 2. Okay, that puts us to number 4. r squared plus r minus 30 equals 0. And leading coefficients of 1. So both these will be r. I don't want you to think this is a new way to factor. This is just certainly a, a shortcut um, for when that leading coefficient is a 1. So what multiplies to negative 30 and adds to 1? So that will be 6 and minus 5. So your solutions are r equals negative 6, r equals 5. Uh, 5, x squared plus 11x plus 30 equals 0. This thing factors, x plus 5, x plus 6. In order to make x plus 5 0, x would have to equal negative 5. In order to make x plus 6 0, x would equal negative 6. Or 6. 
n squared minus 3n minus 40 equals 0. So one side is 0. It makes sense to factor. Now if it is factorable, this one is uh, the leading coefficients of 1. So both these are n. Now I'm not splitting the middle term just because when that leading coefficient is a 1. I don't really you know, have to go through that process. And that's always the case. If you can see an easier way to factor it, more efficient than splitting the middle term, just do it. Factor it. So multiplies to negative 40, adds to negative 3. Uh, let's see, 10 and 4 won't do it. Uh, 5 and 8, and I think the 8 is a negative. So, and you know, if you, if you want to double check did you factor it correctly, you'd multiply this out. So if you multiply that out, you know, your two middle terms here, that would be a minus 3n. You have n squared minus 3n minus 40, and just go back and compare that. That's what you started with. So, I mean, you never really need to ask the question of, did I ask did I factor this correctly? Because you just check your answer by multiplying it out. Uh, nonetheless, your answers here are n equals 8, n equals negative 5. Okay, moving on to 7. So 7, you know, it's still a factoring problem. Just kind of bigger numbers. So when I look at 6, negative 36, and 54, I, I, I realize that, uh, and I see that there's a common factor. Um, so you could factor a 6 out to start with. And we're solving that thing's equal to 0. So solve the left, factor the left side. Let's see, let's take a 6 out. 6b plus 9. So this thing should factor. This thing does factor, and it's easy to factor because that number's a 1. So what are the factors of 9 that add to negative 6? So negative 3, negative 3, right? b minus 3 b minus 3. So your only solution is b equals 3. And if b is 3, you'll get 6 times 0 times 0, which is 0. So 8, so really the only new learning or something different in 7 was, hey, by the way, look at all of these things. You know? If there's a common factor, take it out, because it makes what you're trying to factor uh, much simpler. <coughs> 8, 8v eight squared minus 96v plus 256 equals 0. So you're solving it. Factoring is a good way to solve, and this one, you know, this one's going to be factorable. We can take an 8 out. 8 times 10 is 80, times 11 is 88, so times 12. So 8 minus 12v plus... Let's see, 256, 256 divided by 8, what, you got uh, 324, 116, so 32. You got some long division right there. So, this number's a 1, so you can, you know, kind of shortcut factoring. What are the fact, 1 times 32 is 32. What are the factors of 32? that add to negative 12, uh, negative 6, negative 6, v minus 6, v minus 6. So negative 6, oh, that's not going to work. Factors of 32, that would be 36. Uh, let's see, 8 times 4, yeah, so v minus 8, v minus 4. Negative 8 times negative 4 is negative 32, or sorry, positive 32, and negative 8 plus Negative 4 is negative 12. So when you're identifying solutions, that 8 really doesn't matter, right? The solutions are just, well, 
v equals 8, because 8 minus 8 is 0, and v equals 4. Okay, now 9, 5x squared minus 40x plus 75 equals 0. So factor out the 5. 5 times what, uh, 15? 15, 30, 45, 60, 70, yeah. Another nice one, you got a leading coefficient of 1. So this thing's going to factor to 5. Let's see, what are the factors of 15 that add to negative 8? x minus 5, x minus 3. So your solutions are x equals 5, x equals 3. Be careful. If that number there wasn't a 0, you wouldn't be able just to say, oh, 5 and 3. You know, you'd have to you'd have to move that number over and multiply everything together again and then try to refactor it. Or or put it back in standard form and do the quadratic formula. Okay, so we go to 10. 2x squared minus 10x minus 12 equals 0. Take out the 2. Leading coefficient is a 1. So what are the factors of negative 6? What are the factors of negative 6 that add to negative 5? Negative 6 times positive 1 is negative 6. And negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So your solutions are 6 and negative 1. Okay, now go to 11. Okay, and 11. 3a squared minus 12a equals 0. This is nice. There's no constant term. When I look at both of these pieces, they both have a 3 in them, and they both have an a. 3a out of 3a squared leaves a. And 3a times 4 is 12a. So you've still got the product of two items, right? 3a and a minus 4. Multiplied together, they give you 0. So what makes 3a 0? Well, if a is 0, and what makes a minus 4 0? Well, a equals 4. 12. 6k squared plus 6k equals 0. They both have a 6 and a k. k plus 1. Two items multiplied together give you 0. Well, can you make either of them 0? Yes k equals 0, k equals negative 1. All right, 13. Let's get fun. Solve each with the quadratic formula. 10p squared plus 9p minus 8 equals 0. You want to have it set equal to 0 before you do the quadratic formula. Otherwise, it's not going to give you anything valuable. So, um... Let's go. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's going to be what x equals. Um, that's going to be that's going to give you the value of x that makes your quadratic equal to zero. So the opposite of b is negative 9 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 9 squared is 81. Minus 4 times 10 times negative 8. And that's all divided by 2 times 10. So that's negative 9 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, that's 81 minus a negative, that's addition. So 81 plus... Let's see, 40 times 8 is 320. So 
x equals negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 401 divided by 20. 401 does not have any perfect squares that divide into it. So I'm thinking of like 4, 16, 25, 36. So it's not like you're going to reduce that radical. So you're just going to leave your answer like this. Now those, you know, actually, honestly, though, at a, as a decimal, that would be pretty nice. Um, so if you, if you want to think about what does that answer actually tell you. So negative 9 plus root 401 divided by 20, 0.5512. Oops. X approximately, approximately 0.55. We'll go 1. And then X is approximately... I'll do the minus divided by 20, negative 1.451. So those are the zeros of that quadratic. Those are the roots of that quadratic. And they're real, right? They're real complex numbers. So that means that this quadratic has two x-intercepts, and it intercepts at uh, 0.5. 0.551 and negative 1.451. Uh, this quadratic opens up. Opens up. We're not asked to find the vertex. We certainly could with negative b over 2a. But you have to know what the quadratic formula is doing for you, right? It's finding roots. It's finding zeros. And if those roots and you know, zeros, same thing, if, if they are real complex numbers, it's also finding you the x-intercepts. 14. Okay, x squared plus 10x plus 16. Real quick, that actually factors... Um, this thing factors to x plus 8, x plus 2. So your solutions would be x equals negative 8, x equals negative 2. Uh, those would be the solutions to that. We're asked to do it with the quadratic formula. So the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a. times c all over 2a. So negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 64. So square root of 36 all over 2. So square root of 36 is 6. So x equals negative 10 plus or minus 6 over 2. Let's see, negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 10 minus 6 is negative 16. Negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. Just wanted to reaffirm that those are the same values. You're not always going to be able to factor, but you can always go with the quadratic formula. But factoring, if you're given the choice and it's factorable, it's much more efficient. 15. 3m squared minus 48. 3m squared plus 0m minus 48, to be more precise. So, quadratic formula, the opposite of b, 0 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 48 all over 2a, when a is 3. That's going to tell you the value of m that you would plug in if you wanted to get out 0. So you end up with plus or minus the square root of 4, 3, and 48. 4, 3, 48. It's 576. 
576 is a perfect square. Its square root is 24, so plus or minus 24 divided by 6. So 24 divided by 6 is 4. m equals 4. Negative 24 divided by 6 is negative 4. Okay, 16. 4n squared minus 12n minus 8 equals 0. Quadratic formula. I'd deal with smaller numbers first, actually. If you'd notice, you can actually take out a 4. n squared minus 3n minus 2. So you've got two items that when multiplied together, you get 0. You can use the quadratic formula to tell you when the blue item will be 0. So the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times a. Right? The blue thing is a quadratic. The quadratic formula will tell you where a quadratic equals 0. 4 times something is 0. So we're just going through this process to figure out what makes the blue thing 0. So that's 3 plus or minus. So that negative and that negative make a positive. So that's like 9 plus 8, so 17. So 3 plus or minus the square root is 17 over 2. And that's it. That's, that's the value of n that would make this thing 0. 17. 7 r squared minus 6 r minus 22 equals 0. Nothing can be factored out. Uh, it's already said equal to 0. On the test, you might see this like if I was going to be tricky, I'd say you know, equals 22. So your first step would be moving the 22 over. So that would become a minus 22 equals 0. Okay, so the opposite of b, 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 36. Whatever b is when you square it, it better be positive, right? When you square a negative, it's positive. When you square a positive, it's positive. 36 minus 4 times 7 times negative 22 all over 2 times 7. Okay, pay attention because that negative and that negative are going to make a positive. So you got uh, 6 plus or minus the square root. So 36 plus 4 times 7 times 22 is 652 over 14. 652 has some perfect squares in it. Um, let's see, 652 has 16 in it. So, so you can follow. Square root of 652 is square root 16 times square root 163. Because 16 times 163 is 652. So square root of 16 is 4. So 4 root 163. That's the same as square root 652. So we've got to simplify a little. Um, so you got r equals, you're going to see why I do this, 2 times 3, that's 6, plus or minus. 2 times 2 root 163 divided by 2 times 7. Now, because of this plus, right, that's addition or subtraction, you're going to have to cancel out this 2 with a 2 in each of the terms from above. If that were multiplication, you'd only have to do 1. So your answer is 3 plus or minus 2 root 163 over 7. Done.
and I'm looking at the answer key and it looks like I did something wrong because that two isn't on the answer key okay continuing to look okay I gotta go back through my steps the opposite of B check plus or minus squared B squared check minus four check A check C okay 652, 652, oh, 652 is definitely not 16 times 163, 652 is 4, 4 times 163, which changes this 4 to a 2, square root of 4 is 2, which means there's only one 2 sitting here, it gets cancelled out with these ones. So that two is gone, and now we match up. And I'm not crazy. Okay, I got it right. 18. We're rolling. X squared plus 9x plus 20 um, equals zero. That's always important. Okay, that's a one. So just cheating a little, that leading coefficient is a 1. Are there any factors of 20 that add to 9? 5 and 4. So x plus 5, x plus 4 equals 0. So your solutions are x equals negative 5, x equals negative 4. It's kind of silly to do this problem with the quadratic formula, but if you're looking for more practice, we'll do it. The opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 1. So underneath the radical you've got 81 minus 80. So you've got negative 9 plus or minus square root of 1 over 2. Square root of 1 is 1. Negative 9 plus or minus 1 over 2. Well negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10. And negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Okay. Uh, 19. Expand. How long is this video now? 27. So, uh, I'm going to stop this, and then I'll start the second half of this key.